Hello, welcome to this lecture on TCP socket programming. In our last lecture, we had discussed UDP based socket programming and we'll look at basics of TCP and the minor differences we'll go with. The first URL which is given here, this URL is basically a series of articles that talks about how does server side socket programming has evolved since beginning from a simple connections to multiple connections and today's web server how do they efficiently perform the TCP connection handling so I recommend it to go through that the article also gives you good experience and learning exercises they run the exercises write your own stuff and understand the other URLs are general purpose general details on how to do socket programming using Python so those who like to do hands-on learn is always better to write simple program get an experience be comfortable so I recommend you to go through URLs and after this lecture write some programs so that you can understand what a socket programming is all about so let's get started before a server before a client can connect so socket programming basically means we're looking at like your browser talking to a web server and they talk on TCP so browser can talk to web server only web server is running in, the, in that sense a client can connect to a server provided first server process must be running and not only server process must be running server process must have created a socket as we said socket is like a door from house to the door that connects your house to the rest of the world same way socket is a door for the application that connects this application to the rest of the world and server would be ready to accept connections so this must be done before a client can actually connect to the server now when server is up and running is created a socket and they to accept connections then for client to connect client must first create a tcp socket and after specifying the socket like we said last time socket is like a file descriptor in unix everything happens more like a file descriptor whole io is low more like a file you do read write close same thing will happen in the socket so once you create a socket you basically get an fdr file descriptor and open operate upon it so once you get fd you do a connect now where do you want to connect you have to specify the ip address of the server and the port on the server on which the server process is listening once you connect connection successful that client will establish successful connection to the tcp server when server receives the connection request it will basically create a new socket this is the one thing you should realize in udp just one socket is created and that deals with all the client in tcp when server accepts a connection it creates a new socket primarily because a server can deal with multiple clients and each socket is no sort of a connection each socket need to have a distinct identity so each time a new connection is accepted a new socket is created and server communicates on that socket to the particular client so as many clients you've got you will have that many socket and this enables the server to talk to multiple clients so which is different from udp and how does the os knows which client is talking to so if you look at in tcp a socket is typically identified by four tuple that is source ip source port number destination ip destination port number so if you look at a client perspective there's the client ip address there's the client port number this is a server ip address server port number so for a given server the server ip address and server port number will be the same but different clients either ip would be different or the port number would be different so in that sense two different client applications at least one of these four values would be different and in that sense it distinguishes from 
different IP address. From an application perspective, you can look at TCP connection as basically a reliable that in order byte stream oriented transfer. So you can consider reliable doesn't mean guaranteed. Reliable basically means whatever data has been sent by the client, it will be delivered in the same order to the other side and not out of the order, no packet loss, no duplication and without corruption. That's the meaning of reliable. That basically means when TCP delivers and when it's a byte stream, you look at, so not as a message, but stream by stream is something like a water drop, you get drop by drop. So data is delivered byte by byte to the other end. So other side or server, when client sends let's say 100 bytes, server can get 10 bytes at a time, 20 bytes at a time, or server send two messages of 100 bytes each, sorry, client has sent two messages of 100 bytes each, server can receive whole 200 bytes together in one go, and that's the meaning of a stream. So reliable means it is in order delivery, no packet loss, no duplication, no corruption. That basically means a byte number n is delivered, byte number n can be delivered only after byte number n minus 1 and byte number and before byte number n plus 1 and that's the meaning of streaming. TCP does not mean guaranteed delivery just because client has sent data it does not mean but the data will always be delivered but if everything is fine so reliability basically means whenever data is delivered again let me repeat reliability and guaranteed are two different things reliable delivery means TCP is reliable it basically means data would be delivered in order. That means byte number n would be delivered after byte number n minus 1 and before byte number n plus 1. This will be delivered uncorrupted, no packet loss, no duplication, and there were basically reliability means. So the sketching view is look at a server is running, server running, server to create a socket. And once you create a socket, it's basically need to do a bind. Bind basically means it tells the operating system, look, result is port number for me and give the, the, the request that comes to me, that basically mark for me. And then after bind, basically server waits for the incoming client request. When that happens, then for client to connect, again client has to create a socket like an FD. And then it connects specifying server IP address and server port number. It connects, connection setup happens, and once connection setup happens, after that, the sub server would basically do an accept. This accept returns a new socket number, and the, on the new socket, server would do all the communication, where client is working on the, CSOC, the socket which is created, that's the way it works, and then client can send request, server can then respond, and this process can keep on going as long as the client wants and once this communication happens client can close the request and server will close the connection and that's how things will work out. A simple code view from the client perspective you create a socket specify internet family socket stream which is TCP is stream oriented as we said even though client may send let's say 100 bytes at one go server may receive first 10 bytes next 10 bytes or even one byte at a time, 100 digits. So whole data is delivered as a stream. In UDP base, we looked at data is delivered as a whole message. If client has sent 100 byte message, the server would receive all the 100 byte together. Now server the buffer has only 50 characters buffer, other 50 will be ignored. So UDP is UDP is message oriented delivery. message oriented delivery whereas TCP is stream oriented. So please make not understand the difference. TCP is stream that means one byte at a time whereas UDP is message oriented. And then basically client in this simple application we looked at last time a client would read data from terminal send it, server would receive the data, convert it to uppercase and send it back. Simple application to understand how the client and server TCP would work. Once 
client create a socket, it connect is successful, accept the console from terminal, accept the input, the, what we said in Python 2 and Python 3, Python 3 expect that whole data is sent on a octet uh, stream, so everything has to convert it into the octet part or bytes part, and that's the reason you do encode. So character stream, internal representation has to be converted to a series of bytes, that's when you have to encode, then you send the message, it will go to the server, server will receive it, send a response back, and you receive the response doing a SOC receive call, receive call, and specify how much data you want to receive, and this is what the receive buffer size. So if there, let's say you specify size of 10, and other side has 150 bytes, you will get first 10 bytes, next you receive, do uh, invoke receive, you get remaining 10 bytes and so on so forth and again we need to decode from byte stream to the internal implementation character stream display and process will close the simple application one message is sent one message is received and connection is closed correspondingly server side code again is you create a socket a streaming socket which is tcp socket for udp this would be soc dgram soc dgram for TCP specify TCP stream, you do a bind. Please note for server side binding is very important. This basically tells the OS on which port the application would be, what is the door of the server application so that whenever a connection or data comes, it will be able to give to the server. And this basically tells you which port number to be used for this server. Now you may be wondering why don't we do a bind on the client side so look at whenever you do a connect the os application automatically assigns some available port number so then inherently you don't need explicit bind but you need explicit bind on the server side because os needs to know first time when it's connecting a server the client needs to know which port i need to send data and OS needs to reserve that port and that's the reason you need to do a bind on the server then server specified what is called listen listen is specified the queue size that before i can accept a connection how many people can wait for me is more like a waiting room let's say you're going to the doctor doctor is busy or doing something and how many patients can wait in the waiting room so what is the size of waiting room that is basically de defined by the listen call listen one means only one person or one connection can wait if i say listen five that means only five new connections can wait. So at the exercise, you can play with this as well. And one server should be running always. This is a loop forever loop. You basically run forever. Accept a connection. This accept, remember, returns a new client socket. Remember, you said server every time. And accept a new connection gets a new socket. And for the coming of the client, it will always use the socket. Now server will receive on this socket the message sent by the client get converted into correct internal character stream convert into uppercase and call it back to the byte stream and send it and this so again this server simple server code accepts one message sends one response and closes the connection and next time accept the next connection very simplistic server code that's the way it runs and if you want to see that server should run as process as many requests from the client as many so after accepting this send and receive once you accept a connection this send and receive should be in a sorry this send and receive should be in a separate loop while loop as long as client keeps sending that process it and only when client closes then should close the connection and we'll show you that basic code as well when you run the example there and there's a process going on so just a brief details about the socket api calls as we said you need to create a socket it is given fd you specify the family which is internet if you do local file communication this basically would be the you know, unix it indicate that you're doing local communication this indicates whether you're doing tcp or udp stream in tcp dgram soc dgram means udp and if you're trying to do raw communication 
at the directly IP layer, it will be SOC RAW. For direct communication at the IP layer, this top would be SOC RAW. That means all the TCP UDP headers you need to manage yourself. Next would be your call would be the different options. We probably skip it when we talk about transport layer. We look at it basically specifies a socket blocking, non blocking. Can I reuse this port address, even, even the free read it immediately, and different kind of option what the buffer size would be. Do I need to keep the data with me in buffer or transmit it? Different kind of options. So at the moment, we'll basically skip those. And other will look at, as you said, bind. Bind requires a tuple, host name and port number. If you give a host name empty string, that basically means all the IP addresses, or you can get specific IP address, but port number is a must. This port number, so this whole thing as a tuple. Quite often I see a mistake. It's in Python. If you don't specify the tuple, it gives you error. So this is the bind parameter. Bind as a single parameter. And the single parameter is a tuple, consists of two values, host name and the port number. Once successful, this particular port number was reserved for the application. And next is basically this an N. This N is the size of the queue. That means that many connections can wait in the queue for the clients. So before server can accept. And once server decides to accept a call, one connection is picked up from the queue, given to the server. So we're going to process it. If it is a multi-threaded server or server trying to handle multiple connections, it can do multiple accept and it's on a different socket. Now whether it is threading or it does something else, that is up to the server. But accept basically says gives a new connection from the waiting queue. And if there is a new connection waiting, then accept would be blocked till the client connects to the server. On the client side of it, you basically do a connect and you specify host name and the port number which connects to a server and you can give a name if your DNS is working domain name system as we studied it can jolt to the IP address you can use your host name or you can specify IP address directly here as well but this can be fine too and remember this connect in general unless you make a socket non-blocking it is a blocking call that means a TCP handshake must happen and when TCP handshake is complete only then connect would succeed and return you back. Another so socket API call is to receive and send data. To receive, you say receive. For TCP, you specify the size. If you specify, let's say n is equal to 100, that means so OS on the stack data, it can give you up to 100 characters. If it is less than 100, it may still give you less than n. It's not that they're only going to give you n. The receive n means it's going to give maximum of n characters and it can give you less. If you get less, you have to read more again and continue. And that's the notion of the streaming comes in. So let's say client has sent 100 bytes. You can say receive 5, then receive 5, then receive 5. You will receive same 5 bytes at a time, so 100 bytes. But if it is UDP, it is much of the delivery. And if you don't get sufficient size, Let's say client send 100 bytes for UDP and this receiver you receive from only let's say 10 bytes. You look at 10 bytes and says message oriented delivery, other 90 bytes would be discarded. So understand the difference between message oriented delivery and the stream delivery. TCP is stream delivery. The receive receiver specified same as two would be sent. You do a send message. Again, unless socket is non-blocking, it becomes a blocking call if there's no buffer. Send message does not mean the common misnomer that means send data has gone to the other application. All that send success means this data has been transferred from application buffer to TCP buffer in the OS. All it means is OS whenever get time or network stack on the central machine, whenever feasible it will send the data. It only send means the data has been transferred from application buffer to the OS buffer and no more. It doesn't mean data has gone to the other side. Closing a connection, you can do a close, which basically that means everything is closed, it can no more be processed. There is some other specific call, shutdown, will probably, I recommend you to go through that. It refers to half close, that means you can keep receiving data if you don't want to send it, 
or you can keep sending data you don't want to receive it or you can do a both so I recommend you to look at the man page shutdown and do a better but we will not discuss this shutdown so let's look at a simple program well as an example we run a simple program server and a client so let's look at this client and server so I am running on the server side let's say Look at TCP server dot pi. This is a command line arguments. By default, we are saying listen on all the IP addresses, and server needs to know which port number to use. So we specify that port number, and then after doing this, we create a socket. Then we do a bind on the port number. It's for listen QB21, and simple call server would receive one message, send it back. So let's run Python. TCP server dot pi port number let's say 8888 so it needs server name as well sorry so I would say dash dash server we have a default value there 127.0.0.1 dash dash port so now my server is running on waiting for port data let me run a client this is a different machine this machine Server is running on Unix. My client is running on Mac. So let's look at Python. So dash dash server, sorry that means if it isn't this time out it will not work so let me rerun this server again working across a different machine. So I can specify 0000, 0, 0, 0. that means listen on all IP addresses server, let's look at my IP address which is 10.211.55.11 port number 8888. It connects now server ready to receive data let's say hello how are you this is the message you get server sends it back uppercase is what you get and remember our code says process one message receive one message and close the connection so the new one similarly connection is closed I can send it again did we close connections where collection gets closed. This certainly we don't want. We would like to do that. Server should be able to run in a loop. So let's look at another program there. More TGP server loop. I would recommend that you play with it. So look, I'll basically do another while loop there. So as long as I keep receiving a message, receive message, send it back, and once whenever client closes the connection, I will not receive a message. Length would be zero. And then I'll basically lose the connection and continue. So let me run this program TCP server loop. Okay, this is let me use a different port number. Now I'll run it. Connection there TCP client port number 9999. Hello. Now here, if you look at the client code, client is basically sending one message and then is receiving it and closing it. Server is still running. Let's look at do I have a client which is so okay. Let's look at client loop. So if we look at now client will continue until I type an exit. So let's look at that. So let's run.
hello you get the data so we are continuing one connection but we can connect to other clients as well glad to learn socket programming or whatever type and once you type an exit it will basically exit connection is closed and you can do that while things are running you can also see the net state server is listening so as I said let me connect SSS this is server so look we are listening on port number 9999 and when I run it so let me run another client, client is server is already running. Let me connect to another using another client here. You see now if you look at the same thing, you will see this is connected. My client IP address is this, client port number is this, then server IP address and my server is still doing listening for the next connection. And I can do, let's say I can make another invocation there. I can say Python. TCP, sorry. Server 10.211.55.11 dash dash port 9999. So you see now I have two connections established client 1, client 2, and so on and so forth. And server did you listen next connection? This is because I specifically listen size Q and that's the way it works. And that's what basically we are talking about. So just to get your better develop understanding, I recommend you to carry on some exercises. So first is do simply you can even try using with NC. And so we'll take the server code, write your own server program, run write a client program, and server run a server program run and connect and then see do these works this, this sample code you can look at the first url which we given in the resources the article gives you the sample program of server and client you can look from there or at your own one or you can look at the github repository of mine to find out these details and you can abort this client by control c at the second exercise connect more than one tcp client like what we did and see how does it really work Play with listen parameter, if you say listen 1, and listen 2, see how many clients you can really connect and what point they are bought. For again, you want to get into details of listen something, I said required you to refer to the article we referred. Third exercise is modify the server program. Currently, our server program treats one client at a time and just handles one connection at a time. We want to do all the current concurrently and then it basically so create for each new client create a new thread and that's what this basically work lastly you can even run NC to play with it so I'll give you a simple demo with NC let's say NC minus L 3333 and on the client side I can say NC 10.211.55.11 so this is the server, this is NC as a client, you type hello, you get same thing here, respond, this is NC chat and this simple TCP connection communication, you can look at those and you want to see how does the socket calls are made, you can actually run asterisk call asterisk NC minus L then you can basically see it makes a socket call then it makes a bind call then it does a listen one waiting for the accept and then when you do run again the accept it basically returns a value it returns the socket id 4 and do implementing and things will continue whenever you type something of that kind so you can look at what the read write calls are and that's how things will work out so with that come to an and again recommend you play with it and next lecture will give some more exercises for you to work with to develop a better understanding of TCP and GDP. Thank you.